but current science was a different matter for you. Go on, tell us a bit about it. Yeah, it was, and, there, and it was a great timing, and there was a timing trigger there that was quite, that, that I have such vivid memories of. Um, and, uh, and so I'll, I'll regale that, that story. So, so Cara Science came about um, in, in 1991 through, through the de demise of a, of a company which um, was using enzymes to do a whole set of things called enzymatics that had been set up by a very charismatic um, uh, Welshman called Chris Evans. Um, and uh, it, was a, it was a technical success. It was actually quite a commercial success, but it was a financial disaster. And it was an exit disaster because it was in too many areas that no single person could buy it. And at the time when the financing window, when the financing dried up because they'd had all their investment from a corporate investor who got out of the space, they had nowhere to go. And there was a part of the technology that, they'd been, that, that they had there which was using enzymes to make chemicals and particularly handed chemicals. So those of you who are chemists, uh, um, those who aren't chemists ignore this, those who are chemists will know that, 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 you know, that, that the handedness is a very important property uh, and, that, uh, and, and that there's such a thing called chirality. And when things get complicated, um, if you hold this glass up and put a mirror here, you'll see the same glass. If you hold this hand up to the mirror, it's a more complex structure, you'll see this hand. And actually, those hands are different. If you try shaking a right hand with a right hand, it, it, whilst it's got all the same fingers, the same bits, it can't grip. And that was something that at molecular level was known for years and years and years. And, uh, and I, it, it had been an area that I had looked at academically. It had been an area I'd looked at when I'd been at, I'd become quite a world expert when I was at PA, a consultancy, a technology consultancy. And I'd gone around the world talking about it. I'd helped loads of companies to look at opportunities in the space. And there were opportunities. There was no doubt that pharmaceutical chemistry, medicinal chemistry was getting more complicated. And so was coming up with more things that were handed. Um, people were beginning to recognize that these handed molecules, whilst chemically they seem to be exactly the same, biologically, because biology does everything by grasping, were completely different. They might have beneficial effects and toxic side effects. They might have different, um, all sorts of different I I biological effects. And it was something that regulators were beginning more interested in. And the pharmaceutical industry was beginning to say, hang on a minute, we need to be careful here. And we're going to try and make things in -handed, single handed form. And that was an opportunity, but it was a chemistry opportunity. It was helping to solve chemistry problems for pharmaceutical industry uh, 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 that was increasingly trying to make molecules in single handed form. And, and, and at Cara Science, we had that technology because we pulled it out from enzymatics, which had enzymes, and enzymes are good at making single-handed chemistry. But it was quite clear there was another opportunity. And that came about from the hundreds of drugs that had been developed, which were on the market as mixtures. And technically, scientifically, this made no sense. This was a mixture of two different entities. Well, that's easy. You just take out half the drug, and you've got a new drug, which may well be more active and better. That doesn't work like that in the pharmaceutical industry, because everything is regulated. You cannot sell anything. You cannot develop anything. You cannot invest in anything, unless you know what the regulatory path was. And the regulatory path was uncertain. So we'd set up this, this business called Cara Science, which was solving chemistry problems for the likes of Glaxo. And we were doing OK, and we were earning revenues. But we knew there was an opportunity that was all about taking those drugs that were on the market as mixtures and redeveloping them in single-handed form where there might be a medical benefit. But there was this great, gray cloud over it, which was called uncertainty around the regulatory process. And every time I'd looked at this business, and I'd done it for big companies, small companies, business plans, you came to this point, you had no idea what the investment proposition was. You had no idea whether the entry barrier was high or low. And then I went to a conference uh, in Paris um, on April 21st, um, uh, 1993. And it was a thing called the DIA, the Drug Information Agency. And it was the <laughs> dullest conference. It was full of people, scientists who were talking about very dull stuff around chirality, around, around um, uh, HPLC columns and stuff like this. However, what had happened in the background, which none of us knew, none of us knew this was going on, was the world of pharmaceutical regulation was desperately searching for things it could harmonize. They decided they wanted to make pharmaceutical regulation the same in the US, in Europe, in and in Japan. And they, would, and they realized they couldn't harmonize existing regulations 
Because that meant someone had to compromise on something they'd already written down. They had to look at things that were new. And they had decided behind doors that they were going to take the chirality issue and take it as an example for the harmonization of regulations. We didn't know this was going on, and they all decided to meet at this DIA conference. So we're all at this really dull conference, and all these regulators are up in hotel rooms trying to work out what can happen. And on the last day, a lady from the FDA came down with some handwritten overheads and broke into the last talk of the day and said, um, we've done some thinking, the regulators, and this is what the regulations are going to be. And she put them on the overhead. And most people were sitting there, there were scientists, and, it, and I'm sitting there going, this is it. This is it. She defined exactly what was happening. Right? And I got on the plane, and I flew home, and the next morning, we said, right, we raised 10 million, right? and we get out of the door, and we do this. The next morning, we started. And interestingly, two other companies did it at exactly the same time. And they did it in America. And actually, because the quantums of cash were better and they could do it faster, they did it better than us in the long run. But that was a trigger. That was seeing something and knowing that that's an opportunity. 